Hey everybody, and welcome to a game that I think, if you like a lot of the stuff that I do, you are going to like a lot. This is Rogue Legacy uh, from Cas uh, sorry, Cellar Door Games. I got confused because we're playing in a castle, but uh, this made a lot of buzz last week when there was the, the trailer for the game that got the number one on our gaming, and everyone that cares about roguelike likes was like, fuck, dude, I gotta get my hands on that. Well, I'm lucky enough to have my hands on it right now. We're gonna get started. Rogue Legacy, this is an early demo. The game is available on Greenlight for voting, but not available for playing right now outside of uh, some very, very early press builds, I guess. And it's kind of like Spelunky merged with La Mulana, because it is an action platformer with roguelike elements and permadeath, uh, mixed with like a zombie you, because after you die, you do get to take an air, and you can choose what air you have, but they have like randomized abilities and classes and stuff. Uh, mixed with almost like a 10 million in the way that you progress. It's a little bit difficult to explain, so why don't we just get started here. Uh, you can see I've, I've been playing this game for about 45 minutes so far, and I've basically, you know, I, I try to stay as unbiased in these videos as possible, but I've basically completely fallen in love with this, even though it's in the very early state. Uh, we started as Sir Johannes the Knight, uh, and then, you know, you can see we've got, like, what, 15 deaths here uh, of various people that have lived for an X amount of time. Some of these lives represent, you know, 10 seconds. Some of them represent 45 seconds. Not many of them go longer than a minute. But after you die, uh, you get to keep the gold that you earned in the castle, but all of your character's abilities are gone. So now you have to choose from one of your sons and daughters. We have Lady Charlotte the Knave. So her class is a Knave, which means she has low stats, but devastating critical strikes. Uh, no special traits, and she has the Castlevania Axe spell, where you kind of like lob them in an arc. Uh, we have Sir Fleming the Knave, who's got the same um, uh, class, but as his trait, he has trouble remembering where he is. I have no idea what effects this has, uh, and he has a dagger spell. And then we have uh, Lady Teresa the Barbarian. She has no traits as well, so you know what? Let's let's play a simple one with Lady Teresa the Barbarian. Uh, Barbarian basically means you're like a kind of a tanky class. Now, with the gold that we've earned, we can do things here. We can upgrade, uh, you know, our starting health. We can upgrade our starting uh, MP. We can upgrade our equipment burden, or uh, we can give our money to this dude right here, and he will allow us to buy some stuff. But I already have, uh, I've, I've bought all the stuff I can with the amount of money that I have. Now, you might be saying, Brian, why don't you just save up a ton of money? Uh, well, the reason you don't is because every time you enter the castle, almost in like a, again, to emphasize the permadeath element, uh, you have to pay this dude all of your money to get in. So you start with zero money, and now we're gonna start with the actual game. So there's two basic major components of Rogue Legacy, at least in its current state. By the way, this is meant to be, uh, a much larger game in its final build. In this build that we're playing right now, we can only play on the castle. That MP potion isn't gonna do us too much. Uh, but we can only play on the castle, but as you can see, there is a tower, a dungeon, and a forest that we'll get to later. And each one, I believe, has a, an associated boss. Uh, I have gotten to the boss on the castle once, but I got my ass kicked. So, in getting started here, again, there are two... Oh, that mirror's gonna come to life. We should get out of here. Um, there are two basic things that you should be doing all the time in uh, Rogue Legacy, and all of them are tied to uh, getting gold. You really, at least, you want to beat the game, of course, but you really just want to get as much gold as possible in the early game. This is where the 10 million kind of aspect comes in, in order to uh, upgrade your character as much as possible. This game is hard as hell. I'm not even gonna talk about this fairy chest room just yet. Uh, let's drop down here instead, because I haven't even gone over the mechanics yet. Basically, uh, it, it's kind of similar almost to a Shovel Knight, actually, which is a weird comparison to make, since both of these games are still in development right now. Uh, but, you know, we can attack here. I'm using the Xbox 360 controller, because, as mentioned, I always use the Xbox 360 controller uh, for action platformers. Uh, let me just come down here. I should use my um, magical ability as well. By the way, notice how much damage enemies do. We will die very, very quickly if we don't, uh, you know, wise enough, basically. Sadly, I can't open this chest without a key. But yes, um, we can either, uh, we can attack, we can jump and attack, or we can attack downwards. That's often used for puzzles as well, or jumping puzzles, I should say. Now, this is going to be an interesting situation, because as we get close to these spikes, they are going to pop up and hurt us. So we're just going to run through as fast as we can and try to get the gold. Okay. <laughs> Again, the gold is uh, the most important part. Oh my god, these guys do 50 damage each? Jesus Christ, get out of this room. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, the main melee component of the game. We can also do uh, magic, as you can see right here. We can summon these flames. Not all magic is created equal. This flame magic in particular seems really strong compared to, you know, just being able to fire an axe. But uh, it also seems to do, or to take substantially more MP. So we're honestly about to die. We're only on about a third of our health remaining, and I'm not doing as much damage as I would hope to be doing. So in my typical run in Rogue Legacy typically ends 30 seconds to two minutes, I would say. It's very rare for me to survive. Oh my god, that was real bad. It's very rare for me to survive uh, longer than uh, a few minutes. But death isn't really penalized in this game, which is something that I mentioned as being a positive in a lot of games. By the way, there are floor traps in this game, so I should be really cautious. Uh, uh, 
One more hit will kill us. I should be really cautious about just busting open barrels, because it's totally possible they will floor- Ah, and I just died to a floor trap. God damn it. Okay, so you can see here Lady Teresa was slain by a floor trap, and this is where the game gets really cool. We're basically back to square one. Uh, we get some parting words there, which is basically just a tip that we can use uh, later in our Rogue Legacy play. But then we just come back to the lobby here, or the, the main menu, and then we get to choose again. So we can see uh, we have Lady Charlotte the Knave this time. She can't see in 3D. I have no idea what impact that has. Uh, she's a knave. Sir Johnny the Barbarian can summon a blade wall. He has no special traits. And uh, we have Lady Teresa the Knave, who is uh, nearsighted. You know what? Let's play as a, as a character who is nearsighted this time, just to show you how batshit crazy this game gets sometimes. So I'm going to upgrade my health a little bit, uh, and I'm going to upgrade my starting MP. And again, this is where the 10 million kind of stuff comes in, uh, in that... Um, you know, every time we uh, die, as long as we have some gold, we can at least upgrade ourselves. I mean, in 10 million, they did it via equipment. We can do it via equipment here as well. Uh, but, um, yeah, hopefully that element remains clear. Now, you might be wondering, why are the sides of the screen blurry? Well, that is because we are nearsighted. So anything close to us uh, is uh, totally clear, but anything far away from us is sadly a little bit blurry. So this can be a little annoying, but it's also kind of cool. Uh, by the way, there might be a little bit of frame rate slowdown here. That is, again, this is a work in progress, and uh, I'm imagining this is rendering a little bit differently now that we have nearsightedness. So some of the characteristics, some of the traits are uh, just comedic. Like there's one that was like flatulent, it just makes you fart a lot essentially. Um, I don't know if I want to break the chairs up there. Uh, some of them do have uh, impacts. Like, there's other funny ones, though, like dyslexia, which just makes, basically makes it harder to read. These are kind of superficial, but at the same time, it, it, it adds into the absurdity of the game, which is definitely, I think, a note that this game is trying to hit. That is a fountain that would 100% heal us. Uh, this game, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I like it a lot. I am probably insanely addicted to it after only about an hour of play. I can't pull myself away because it's got that every run just takes you know two or three minutes like 10 million uh and you know you just want to keep doing it over and over and over it's like Civ, you just want to do one more one one more run one more run uh but this definitely has a bend more towards humor than something like spelunky or the binding of isaac or La particularly it has less or uh, more of a humorous element than uh la mulana of course now these mirrors will come to life if i hit them but they I mean, it's, it's worth killing enemies because enemies give you gold, and, you know, we're probably not going to beat the game on this run. Instead, what we all we want to do is uh, maximize our gold intake. I, I, like I said, I did manage to fight the boss once, but uh, it didn't work out all that well for me. There also seems to be kind of a terraria. I wonder if I can use that twice. No, only once. There also seems to be kind of a terraria influence in the game. Uh, a lot of the enemies, or at least a couple of the enemies, and also the furniture design sometimes seems a little terraria-ish. I'm not sure if this is uh, intentional or, or if it's just me reading into things too much. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying that this is a ripoff. The chairs look a little terraria-ish. Uh, and uh, also the, the boss that I fought was basically just like an enormous eye. Now, this is, I mean, Terraria probably did not invent using eyes as bosses in, in games, but, uh, you know, that's the most recent one that I'm familiar with anyway. So this has been a pretty good run so far. I really want to show you uh, what happens when we get uh, a Paladin, which is another class that I have just unlocked. And basically what they do is they actually have a blocking ability, which definitely changes the way that you play the game uh, because uh, you have the ability to actually block damage from enemies. I don't think it blocks 100% of the damage, uh, at least not yet. I think you have the ability to upgrade that later. Uh, but again, this is very much, I guess this will tickle people either the right way or the wrong way, but it has that kind of 10 million, like, aspect where, um, ooh, that's gonna be the boss room. We can try to fight him and you'll see him. Uh, I will definitely die, though. I wonder if I can activate his waypoint and then just teleport back to the castle and then teleport back. I think I can, in which case, maybe, uh, I really, oh, wait, that, I just teleported us to exactly the same location. Okay, let's teleport us to the starting location. And maybe I'll be able to, uh, buy some... No, I don't have anything here. We have diary entries, but that, that ties into the story, which, uh, is not necessarily what I'm interested in talking about right now. So that's, it's interesting that we can at least warp back there, but it doesn't really do us anything. Uh, and I do have keys, I guess, so I can open these chests. I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, but we did get a ton of gold for that. In fact, this is more gold than I think I've ever had. Let's kill this guy and try to open this chest. Most- oh, I didn't even know we could do that. Mostly because I think- god damn it, we could have fought the boss there. That was totally my bad. Uh, that was, uh, probably uh, my best run in terms of gold, though. So we should be able to upgrade some of our characters' abilities this time. First things first, uh, we have an endomorph here, a barbarian endomorph, which means he's naturally heavy, or she's naturally heavy, and enemies can't knock you back. By the way, I mean, this is perhaps not that important to everybody, but I like that there's uh, already, like, female and male characters in the game. It just 
sends the right message, I feel. We also have uh, another Ectomorph, which means he's naturally skinny, which means he will fly all over the place, but he is a tank. And he also has Hyper Gonadism. You are permaroided. Every attack knocks enemies further. That's a cool, neat interaction there that every hit will send us flying, but every time we hit enemies, they'll get sent flying. Uh, sadly, there is no Paladin here. So let's take this uh, Ectomorph with Hyper Gonadism. I've also seen like uh, Gigantism, and what Gigantism allows you to do is um, you're, you're just super large, and Dwarfism, you're super small. I've seen Baldness, and then when you go to the loading screen where it says Building, it doesn't say Building anymore, it says Balding. I mean, this stuff is very superficial, but it, it makes the game very charming. So I'm just going to upgrade my health and uh, my uh, MP a little bit more. Maybe my equipment burden as well, just because I can. I mean, we can't do anything. Oh, by doing that, I guess I've unlocked some... Uh, new classes. That's actually really cool. That is really neat, actually. So let's try to, with our next amount of money, let's try to get the Architect class, and I'll check that out. Like I said, I'm, I'm still very early on in this, so uh, a lot of the stuff that's coming out here is a, a total mystery to me, which is really cool. I've also occasionally uh, gotten some special items. Like, one time I got the Curse of Sonic, and that just went... It, it's almost like a trinket in Isaac. Uh, it went next to my... Uh, spell there, my, my chakra that you can see, and what it allowed, or what it made happen is every time I got hit, the sonic, like, ring noise played, and all of my, uh, by the way, by, we open these platforms by attacking downwards, that's where the Shovel Knight comparison came in, uh, but, uh, all of my money kind of, like, came out for me, like, in the, like, the rings in Sonic, and I had to go pick it up again, lest I lose it, because obviously money is super important for us here. Again, that was the, the eye-like enemy from Terraria, uh, that was not the boss, but... Uh, the boss is, uh, it looked very similar to that. It was just like a mega version of that, basically. So we do knock enemies pretty far back, I will admit. We get knocked back far ourselves, but it, it's neat how these, it's kind of got like Dungeons of Dreadmore levels of interaction as well. I mean, I know I mention these games every time uh, when I do a roguelike like, but it, it's worth noting. I, I hope that this is translating very well to gameplay, because this is some of the most fun, legitimately, that I've had uh, with a roguelike like in uh, quite some time, and I've played a lot of good ones. Uh, this one is still in a very, oh my god, yeah, platform. In a very early state, certainly it needs some polish, apparently it needs some assets, but I think it already looks pretty damn good. I, I should talk about those fairy chests, by the way. The fairy chests, let's try to do this. Basically, um, there's a chest in this room that you can't see right now, but if we get to it without taking damage, oh, Jesus Christ. If we get to it without taking damage, then uh, we'll be able to open it, but if we take damage, it will become stuck. So this is way easier than the one that I got to last time. Oh, but I still botched it. So now we can do one of two things. We can just say fuck it and leave, or we can say fuck it and leave and come back. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because I actually want to try to get this one. This doesn't seem too hard. It seems more like a, a Mario-style jumping puzzle. It's almost like playing jump rope. Oh, are you kidding me? I didn't take any damage. Oh, maybe it's gone forever once you take damage once, in which case that sucks. Uh, it located in these fairy chests, I believe, are runes, and the runes are, um... I, maybe the same thing as that Curse of Sonic that I picked up. I'm not 100% sure because I've never been able to get a fairy chest. Uh, they don't seem super rare, but again, I die so quickly most of the time that it's difficult for me to find them. Uh, but uh, also there are blueprints that we need to find in here. And the reason we need to find the blueprints, as you might expect... Oh, I don't know if I like this too much. These mirrors are like my least favorite enemy. But I'm busting up all this furniture because the, the furniture apparently, you know, they keep their gold in it. Why not, I suppose? Uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Mirror man, I don't want to do this. Uh, but yes, you need the blueprints to uh, give to the blacksmith, and then the blacksmith will be able to create higher level equipment. And as the game has told me numerous times when I've died, equipment is the best way to increase your stats quickly, or is the quickest way to increase your stats at least. Maybe not the best way, but the quickest way um, for the least amount of money, maybe. So uh, that is obviously important as well. I can open this. Oh, we got a blueprint. Awesome. So we can now make the knight sword. So now with our money, we, we instead of upgrading uh, just our character, we might be able to upgrade uh, our equipment as well, which is very much worthwhile. Now, unfortunately, knocking that knight back is actually a negative in this case. This is going to make him harder to hit from afar, for sure. Now, I should use these chakrams, but uh, I think it's kind of like the uh, that one gun in Super Crate Box, where they, the, they come backwards. Or I guess it's like that gun, or that special ability from Castlevania, uh, more realistically. So we have to, like, jump over those, I think, or they will hurt us. It's almost like an angry boomerang. Can I... Oh, I don't have enough MP to use them anymore. Okay, but I should be able to kill him in a hit or two. Oh, it's going to be close. Okay, he's dead. Uh, and we get another blueprint. This is awesome. So we can now make the knight cape as well, which I assume is going to increase one of our stats and not just make us look cool, but I wouldn't actually be surprised if it just made us look cool. That's kind of a... Uh, you know, this, this game thrives on absurdity. But as I was saying earlier, I really hope this translates well uh, to video because it is a fucking blast to play. I really can't stress that enough. I mean, let's try this again. 
I really can't stress enough that this game is insanely fun and it's addictive. It's got like all the addictive properties of, uh, okay, I guess I can't pick it up because I've already taken damage. That might be a glitch in the game, I'm not 100% sure. Obviously I took damage at the end there, but before that I was doing just fine. Um, what the heck was I going to say? It's got all the addictive properties of like a 10 million, but at the same time, uh, it has those roguelike elements as well, which 10 million had is very, very superficially, uh, but this game has in a much more uh, kind of genuine or normal sense. I mean, that's not me knocking 10 million. I like 10 million a lot. We've got a new spell here, which is cool. Uh, we also managed to pick up a decent amount of HP, so we can replace our Chakram with the... Uh, Spell found Night Cape, obviously that's going to be a glitch. Again, I have some mercy, this game is very much early in development. But what, I, what I'm trying to do with this video, because there is no playable demo right now, is uh, very much pimp the green light campaign. Like, straight up, I hope more press is going to cover this in the coming week, or weeks. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the only person to have a copy right now, I don't think I am. I, I would be flattered, but also very surprised. Um, so I, I would love to see this green light campaign gain some momentum. So, you know, voting for games on green light is free. And, uh, this is the kind of game that if you like the Binding of Isaac, if you like Spelunky, if you like, uh, roguelike likes, not to make the most awkward sentence possible, but if you like roguelike likes, I, I can say this with basically 100% authority, which I almost never can. Uh, you're gonna like this game a whole heck of a lot. And, you know, this is barring them making some kind of crazy decision and releasing it for like $100 or something like that. Is this another warp point that I found, or is this, oh god, what have I done? It's taken me just outside the room. I'm not... I, wait a minute. Where am I? I don't know what's happened here. It's taken me, like, back to the start of the level. Maybe that's just, like, a random... Like, a telepills, basically. I don't know. Uh, in terms of gold here, we're not doing too well. One complaint that I do have is that is that gold is a, a little bit luck-dependent at this point. Like, you may have seen that sometimes I will break, like, a pot or something, and I'll get a, uh, a gold bag instead of simply a gold coin. That's cool and all. I mean, it, it feels really nice when it happens, but at the same time, uh, it does mean that, like, runs where I get 700 gold is basically just because, like, oh, I accidentally, uh, like, found a gold bar. Or, uh, found, sorry, found a gold bag, and that's all that matters. That was another good run there. Uh, let's, let's get the Architect class and then play as him. That could be cool. It's really neat that there are, even though the game is in such an early state, they, they do still have a, a number of different classes. Oh, maybe I won't be able to play... We have a mage this time with time stop. Um, we have a pal. Oh, we have a paladin. Awesome. Uh, so we have hypo gonadism this time. So we can't summon enemies back. This guy is OCD and dwarfism. This is really interesting uh, because dwarfism makes him super short, but OCD make, makes it so he gains HP and MP for breaking stuff, which is a really good ability to have because you're breaking stuff anyway to try to get gold. But in any case, let's play as uh, the paladin here so you can see the special ability, and we'll unlock. We might be able to unlock. Uh, the architect and the uh, oh, and now we get a whole other tech tree on that side. That's really cool. Uh, so we can lock down a castle and protect it from changing, like the layout of a castle. Lock it down. Oh, so it's not a uh, it's not a special class. It's just sometimes the the level layout will be super hard. Sometimes it'll be super easy. And if you like it being super easy, then I guess the architect can make it seem that way. That's really cool. Uh, and now we can upgrade the barbarian as well and make him become a barbarian king which gives him a shout that knocks virtually everything away. And we can also just get an attack upgrade here, which seems really cool and worth buying. So we'll get that. Uh, cool, let's give this one last try, and then I will... Um, I'll just talk to this guy first. Greetings, boy. Want to know a cool fact? I'm crazy. This lever here with a simple pull, I can prevent the castle from changing. This way, you can go through exactly what your ancestors went through. Impressed you should be. Whatever, mostly magic. 50 gold to lock it down. I don't have 50 gold, uh, so we, we're not going to be able to do anything there. But in any case, it's kind of cool that I have him unlocked. Uh, it, it just really a lot of neat things with respect to this game. I, I, I mean, I think I mentioned this before, but yes, the levels are procedurally or randomly generated. I'm not 100% sure which. To be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure that it's being procedural and random generation. Uh, unless procedural generation is just, like, using some kind of method to create the levels. Uh, whereas random is just, like, exactly right. Because you can't just randomly create a level. There's got to be some procedure, otherwise it might just be, like, walls everywhere, right? There's got to be some kind of conditions. Anyway. I digress. This is neither here nor there, necessarily. Uh, I really like Rogue Legacy. I really think you should vote for it on Steam Greenlight. Uh, there's no Kickstarter, as far as I know right now, or anything like that. So, you know, no no financial oh, uh, investment necessary. Also, these guys, the last game they made, I believe, or the most prominent game they've made, is a PC game called, a uh, free game called Don't Shit Your Pants, which is also, you know, popular in the YouTube community. I think in particularly, or in particular, Critical played it. Oh, I can't, I can't open this. We got another blueprint. Beautiful. Squire chest plate. Oh, I am probably going to die getting out of this room, but at least, you know, getting the blueprint means that I will live on in a certain way. Ooh, that was kind of close. 
And by kind of, I mean extremely. I mean, it's not a perfect game in its current state, uh, but it is really, it was kind of close. It was really, really damn fun. And it's super pick up and play. Like it is not uh, difficult at all to understand what's going on here. If you've ever played, even if you haven't played a roguelike like before, that doesn't matter. As long as you played any like Castlevania or, uh, um, oh my God, a Ghosts and Goblins. That's what I was trying to think of. It, it definitely is kind of a Ghosts and Goblins type aesthetic as well. And you know what? It's super fucking hard as well. Like in terms of the opening floors. I mean, every roguelike, seems hard when you first get started with it or it's like basically not doing its job that well because usually they tend not to have too much length instead they just have uh difficulty which is, is fine but um anyway I'm, I'm getting crazy and digressing here i haven't even demonstrated that you can block attack so let's try that um with this uh terraria eye from hell or whatever this is called so shoot at me i will block boom so this does change the way you play because you don't have to be 100 like hyperactive when it comes to your dodging Instead, you can uh, take, I think you take one damage. We can actually test that right here if I let the skeleton throw at me. No, it, it takes a little MP, actually, uh, which is an interesting mechanic. But, uh, in any case, hopefully uh, you understand what the heck I'm talking about here. Let's stop talking about the meta-ness of the game, because I've already probably pimped out the game enough. Let's just instead uh, try to play through this run and see how well I can do. I have a feeling there are uh, secrets in the game. For example, I mean, you can see that there's like a secret passage over there to get to a fairy chest. Um, but I don't know how to do them right now is the problem. So that's, uh, it, it, it's interesting that there might, again, you know, as Ed and I talked about in our interview, there might be a, a certain degree of magic associated with this game that has not yet been discovered, which is neat. Oh, that's cool. I've never actually used that ability before, and now we have died. I think that's going to do it for my Let's Look At of uh, Rogue Legacy. But seriously, I implore you, vote for this game on Steam Greenlight. It is a goddamn enormous amount of fun. It combines elements from a lot of genres I love and a lot of my favorite games from, uh, you know, the past couple of years into a very nice pick up and play. Something, it's not a casual game, but it's a game that you can play casually for just like a round or two. Uh, it, very, very well done, I think, uh, to Cellar Door Games. Of course, this is still, you know, a work in progress. It's possible they could totally ruin it uh, later in the development. But as is right now, this looks like a very promising game, uh, and I encourage you to support it and uh, allow it to get wider distribution. But as always, thanks for watching, you guys, and I will see you next time.